I'm Dr. Mark Attala, and I want to welcome you to my office. I'm a cognitive scientist who studies time travel and retrocausality, which is how the future impacts the present and the past. And today I want to talk to you about the research of Daryl Bem, who in 2011 published a very famous series of studies called Feeling the Future. Now, if you're familiar with Daryl Bem, he's a prominent uh, social psychologist who came up with the self-perception theory of attitude formation. But he also came up with some other theories too. And what he was specifically interested in, in the feeling of the future research, was uh, this idea of retrocausality. That knowledge, in, when you're studying things like memory, that knowledge from the future can impact your recall in the present. And so uh, this was published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, JPSP, which is a top tier journal in psychology. And the editors even included a, um, a note uh, with his, uh, that, that was put up prior to his um, article that said, look, we know that this, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, uh, we know that this sounds incredibly odd, but We've looked over the methodology, we looked over the statistics, and this is compelling research to publish. And so we're going ahead and publishing it. So, uh, what were the studies about? Well, there were nine different studies. I'm going to talk about two of them. And just to give you a sense of um, the kind of research that he did on retrocausality and the blowback that he received. So, in one of the studies, it involves um, there's two curtains, one on the right and one on the left, on a computer screen. And then behind one of the curtains is uh, a picture. Uh, and so you have to pick the curtain that has a picture behind it. Now, some of these are explicit erotic photos. Uh, I, this is YouTube, and so I can't show you pictures like that. Um, and th these were... Um, so the, it was combinations of men and women, whatever the, 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 partic the research participant liked, that's what they would get to see. And there were also non-erotic photos too. But the point was you have to try to pick the curtain that has the photo behind it. Now in theory, this is gonna work out to be 50-50, that you have 50-50 chance of picking the curtain with a photo behind it. And that's actually what he found for the non-erotic photos, that 49.8% of the time, or just by chance, people were able to pick uh, the curtain with the picture behind it. But for the erotic photos, the explicitly erotic photos, uh, it went up to 53.1% of the time, which is better than chance. Now, I realize this isn't mind-blowing, but uh, Bem's explanation was that um, evolutionarily, it's in your interest to be, to a, be able to identify um, erotic situations. And so therefore, that explains why people were able to pick the curtain with explicit erotic photographs behind them um, with a greater than chance ability. So that's study one. I think that... Um, he also came up with a theory, too, called um, exotic becomes erotic theory uh, that we talk about. I teach romantic relationships, too. Um, but let's talk about the second study, which I think is far more interesting. It's uh, the White Queen study. And the, if you're familiar with Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, or Through the Looking Glass, the White Queen does everything backwards. And at one point, um, she talks about how her memory runs backwards and forwards. And um, Alice said, I'm sure that mine only works one way. I can't remember things before they happen. And the White Queen tells her, that's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. And so here's the setup of the study. He's got, uh, people are given 48 words from four different categories. So 12 words per category. And the categories are things like animals, foods, clothing, and occupations, okay? And so they're shown a word, uh, like cow, and they're told to form a visual image of that word. So if it's cow, picture a cow getting milked or maybe eating a bit of grass or something like that. So they go through the 48 words, um, three seconds at a time. 
And then they're given a surprise recall task, a free recall task, where they say, just remember as many of those 48 words as you can. So they do that. And then they're given a categorization task where they, um, the word comes up. Uh, so what they did was they took 24 of the words that were on the original list of 48 words and they reappeared. And so they had to classify. Um, so if it's cow, they have to classify it as an animal. If it's steak, they have to classify it as food, et cetera, et cetera. What Bem found was that words which appeared in the categorization task were much more likely to be recalled in the free recall task, which means that there was a retrocausal priming effect um, so that seeing the words uh, in the categorization task made it more likely for people to remember those same words earlier. That's a retrocausal phenomenon. Now, you may say to yourself, this research was probably hailed as, as breathtaking and groundbreaking, and everybody probably got all excited about it. Everybody did get very excited about it, um, talking about how it was impossible and that this research shouldn't have been done. So some of my favorite criticisms were things like um, that his research doesn't represent reality. Um, he was also accused of harking, which is a term I was unfamiliar with before um, uh, reading his research, but it's um, hypothesizing after results are known. Uh, he was also uh, accused of cherry picking his data and a host of other problems. So I think the biggest problem that he had though is uh, all research occurs within a theoretical framework. And the theoretical framework that he chose was what is called psi. And psi is um, basically things we can't explain, like um, ESP and um, uh, telepathy, premonition, and prophecy. And so uh, basically what charlatans and um, people who run seances believe in. So even though he had a retrocausal effect, he did not put it under that rubric. He put it under this idea of psi. Now, I do have some problems with his research, which I want to share with you. Also, um, I think the main problems is that, uh, or several problems. One is the participants that he used. So these are just college students, and um, we don't know what their retrocausal sensitivity is, but we can be pretty sure uh, that if retrocausality, retrocausal sensitivity is an ability, that it probably is normally distributed in a population. And so therefore, uh, the people that he had in his study weren't necessarily retrocausally sensitive. They were just anybody. And so I think he should have taken the students who did particularly well and rerun them in the studies over and over again um, and to see if they would get better. Um, etc. I think another problem with the study is that the, the tasks that people were doing were not particularly meaningful to them. And so uh, a free recall task, it's, they're just doing it for extra credit. Um, finding erotic, uh, explicitly erotic photographs behind curtains, um, it's just not that much important to their lives. Um, it has no bearing on their life experiences. And so I think the analogy I would make overall is it's like doing a wine tasting, okay? You can either bring in everybody off of the street and have them do the wine testing, or you can pick experts to do it. And I don't think them picked experts. And the blowback was so great from this um, research that nobody really does research on retrocausality anymore. Um, it was essentially shut down. So uh, that's what BEMS research is about. Uh, I have a number of articles uh, or ideas in psychology and retrocausality, so you should pick that up. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you can visit us on the web too at retrocausality.org. We're trying to ident identify people who are retrocausally sensitive. Um, if you want to support my research on Patreon, I put a link below. And otherwise, if you could like and subscribe and share this video, that would be wonderful. But otherwise, I will see you in the future. 
and have a great day.